Greetings and welcome once again to Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. And thank you, Sharon, for that lovely hymn, Through It All. Listen to these words of Scripture. Psalm 42, 11, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Do you not know Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator to the ends of the earth. He will not go tired tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Listen to these words from Psalm 42, 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So, how many disappointments can we count in our lives? Do we indeed count them? Or do we just stop remembering them? Each of us has had some disappointments, like missed opportunities, not spending enough time with our children, spending too much money and not being wise in our finances, not saying goodbye to someone before that someone dies, poor judgment in decisions, loss of a job, not pursuing further education, failing to smile at that neighbor who's troubled, not taking that cruise before ill health will probably make it impossible not taking the time to visit a friend in the hospital. Now, these are all disturbing disappointments, but most of them, we could have done something, but we didn't. Some disappointments are unavoidable. Ill health, financial crises, not of our own making, a loss of a job, but many of our disappointments are of our own making. And we could have resolved them before they happened, but we didn't. Our faith journey is never a disappointment in itself, but it can involve disappointment in our circumstances, in our relationships, in our health, in our financial issues. We are indeed never exempt from these human factors. But we can learn to deal with them because they occur in the midst of a journey of faith. That's what makes the difference. When we're down, we can say with the psalmist, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. When we're disappointed, We hope in God and praise Him, for He is our salvation. God promises to protect, to comfort, to strengthen, and to guide those who love Him, those with whom He has a personal relationship. And this includes that believing Christian, you. Isaiah writes, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. Sometimes God uses our reaction to a disappointment as a witness to others. 
when people know that we're Christ followers and they see us handling our difficulties and disappointments by trusting in God, then they see that our faith is real. Trusting God in the tough times is a great witness to the world. Jesus also tells us that our relationship with, relationship with him will bring us inner peace. Peace I leave with you, he says. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them ever be afraid. The peace that Jesus promises is, is not the kind of peace the world offers. A peace based on ever-changing circumstances. The kind of peace that Jesus gives is a deep, testing, powerful peace that enables us to face any kind of hardship that might come along. One of my co-curricular responsibilities when I was teaching was assisting the choral music director in preparing students dramatically for the music production. But I was also responsible and supervising and doing a lot of the building of the sets, some of them quite elaborate. Oh, I could make them look very good, very authentic, but my skills were limited. But they just had to look good. Those beautiful sets, though, would only last for the weekend. Why? They were not built to last. They, they were built to be dismantled and the building materials saved for another production. Keeping those sets together for three, maybe even four performances often required the artful use of something called duct tape. Yes, isn't it amazing what duct tape can do? We can repair loose refrigerator shelves we, we can fix a leaky boat. We can repair a smashed windshield for a, the drive to the auto body shop. And we can make a set of emergency flip-flops. We can replace shoelaces. We can tape keys to the bottom of the car so we never lose them. And we can fix holes in our shoes. We can patch a hole in that swimming pool, patch a hole in that tent. We can make a waterproof spoon and apron we can attach leg splints to a broken leg and improvise seat covers for the car. Duct tape. <laughs> Isn't it an amazing product? There is, however, no spiritual duct tape. No spiritual quick and temporary fix for disappointment. But the scriptural fix, the scriptural remedy is as permanent and as perfect as we will allow it to be. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mend your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, that is not an oversimplified, easy answer. No. But it's prerequisite to the answer, which is faith. Persistent, complete, and committed faith. We can do it. We can meet that disappointment head on with faith. We are reminded by Paul when he says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. It is through patience and faith that we overcome disappointment. Charles Stanley, he said, our Heavenly Father understands our disappointment, suffering, pain, fear, and doubt. He's always there to encourage our hearts and help us to understand that he is sufficient for all of our needs. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Oh, I like that. And I like this quote from Franklin Delano Roosevelt, 
when you reach the, reach the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. Indeed, hang on, hang on. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you, and God bless you. Amen.